Hey guys, this is the final review for the 16-17 school year. Uh, this is the Algebra 2 Honors version. And the problems that we're going to be looking at here are based on rational exponents and radicals. Uh, specifically, if you're using your book to help you review, that's Chapter 6. And those are problems 1 through 3, 13, 34, 35, and 36. First up, we've got a graph, a square root function. And this is the graph of y is equal to the square root of x plus 4. Uh, if you wanted to, you could make a table of this. Uh, you could figure out which one of these fits the table of values. You might also recognize that a plus 4 on the inside means that we're moving this to the left 4 units, which gives us b as our answer. Next up, we've got the equation. Uh, the cube root of the quantity x minus 4 is equal to 4. Uh, to get rid of that cube root, I've got to cube both sides. And in doing that, we get x minus 4 is equal to 64. To finish solving this, add 4 to both sides, and x is equal to 68. Uh, since this is multiple choice, you could also have plugged each of the answers in to see which one works. For the next problem, we've got the square root of x plus 30 is equal to x. Uh, I'm going to start off by squaring both sides. And in doing so... We get x plus 30 is equal to x squared. I'm going to bring everything to one side, and we get x squared minus x minus 30 is equal to 0. That needs to be factored, and it factors into x minus 6 and x plus 5. When I solve that, I get x is equal to 6 and x is equal to negative 5. Uh, I've got to plug both of those back in to see if this is extraneous or not. If I plug 6 in, I get the square root of 36 is equal to 6, which is true. If I plug negative 5 in, I get the square root of 25 is equal to negative, 20, uh, negative 5, which is not true. So x equals negative 5 is an extraneous solution. Uh, that means that the answer to this is only 6 and not both of those numbers together. For number 13, we're looking at finding the inverse for a linear equation. Uh, I'd like to remind you the procedure for finding an inverse is we're going to switch our variables. So this becomes x equals, let me make this a little bit smaller, x equals 6y plus 3. We're going to subtract 3 from both sides. So you get x minus 3 is equal to 6y. And we're going to divide both sides by 6 to get x minus 3 over 6 is equal to y. That's our answer. And in looking, that appears to be choice B. We've got to do some function stuff. In terms of this, we've got f of x equals 9 minus x squared, and g of x is equal to 3 minus x. We've got to find f of x divided by g of x. And in doing that, I'm going to get 9 minus x squared over 3 minus x. In this case, you might recognize that 9 minus x squared is the difference of two squares, which is 3 minus x and 3 plus x. So to finish this up, uh, we can do 3 minus x on the bottom. And what you might notice is that the difference of two squares parts lets you cancel something out, so you end up with 3 plus x as your final answer. Here we've got some composition of functions. Uh, we're given r of, s, uh, r of x and s of x. We've got to find r of s of negative 3. What this means is just we've got to plug negative 3 into s. Whatever we get as an answer, then we're going to plug into r. So s of negative 3 is equal to negative 3 cubed minus 4. Negative 3 cubed is negative 27. Minus 4 is negative 31. Now that I've got negative 31, I'm going to plug that in to function r. And that's going to be negative 31 squared plus 2. I'm plugging this in for x. Negative 31 squared is negative 961 plus 2. We get a final answer of negative 9. Here we're asked to simplify an expression involving a cube root. What I'm going to do is break this up into two different pieces. We're going to have the cube root 
of 64 multiplied by the cube root of b to the 15x power. We're going to handle these two different ways. Uh, the first is because the cube root of 64 is a number. It comes out nicely. And if I were to factor 64, what we're going to see is that this is going to be 8 times 8, or 2 times 4 times 2 times 4. If I were to combine those two twos, we get the cube root of 4 times 4 times 4, which is just 4. You also have access to your calculator, so you feasibly could type in the cube root of 64 and get 4 as your answer very quickly. The second part of this I'm not as good at because the variables here uh, don't play well in my head with those exponents. I might use the idea that a cube root is the same as the one-third power. And when I do this, I might be able to see that I can use some exponent rules. And these guys multiply together. 15x times 1 third is going to be 5x. That would be b to the 5x for that second piece, giving us 4b to the 5x as our final answer for this problem. we got to jump back because I forgot to include number 5 for my first time through. And that's solving the equation 3x to the 3 fourths is equal to 192. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do here is to get the messy part, get this x with an exponent by itself. And to do that, I'm going to divide both sides by 3. And what we get is that x to the 3 fourths is equal to 64. Okay. Um, the shortest way to do this would be on a calculator. If I want to completely get rid of this, I want to make this exponent to 1, we're going to raise both sides to the reciprocal power of this. I'm going to talk about another way to do this in a minute. Um, and in doing this, we end up with x to the first on the left side, 64. Yeah, you guys have a calculator that's available for this, uh, for this final exam. So there's no reason that you can't just plug this in. And in doing that, uh, you should get something like 256 as your answer. Looking at this another way, if I've got x to the 3 fourths is equal to 64, if I were to rewrite this x as a uh, radical, we've got the fourth root of x to the third is 64. To get rid of this fourth root, we can raise both sides to the fourth power. It's going to be kind of a big number, uh, and that's okay, um, because we're going to take the cube root in a minute. We get x cubed, and 64 to the fourth power happens to be 16777216. Or somewhere north of 16 million. If I were to take the cube root of this number, uh, so that's 16777216 to the cube root power, we get 256. And what do you know? That's the same thing that we had before. What we did was we wrote this in radical notation, and that let us do this in several steps instead of trying to deal with that exponent all at once. Finally, as a last option, you could quite literally plug each of these four numbers in and see which one gives you that answer. Uh, you've got to be careful in crafting your exponents to include parentheses when you set up your equation.